Hello, I'm the Animation Fanatic, and here is my episode of The Legend of Korra, Book 4, Episode 9. And I was supposed to say review there, but I said episode. Oh. <laughs> hey, at least I'm not Prince Wu. Anyway, uh, just just saw the new episode, just took take a look at it. You know, if you haven't seen it, you probably should before, because you watch this review, because I'm really going to spoil things, as, as you know. Um, so... Uh, the best thing I can say about this review is that it's, not this review, this episode, is that it's very busy. This is a very busy episode. There's a lot going on. There's a lot happening. There's a lot of different motivations, character things ha go happening. And that's just um, within, Republic, within Republic City and on the very outskirts. Uh, that's not even taking into consideration what's going on back at the Banyan Grove tree with uh, Kuvira and her army harvesting the vines. Um, and we will see what she will do with them, create a nuclear weapon, or nuclear-type weapon, I guess you could say, or, or what. But, but this episode isn't about Kuvira. She doesn't even show up in it. This, is, this episode is about Korra, it's about Bolin, it's about Opal, it's about um, a little bit, there's a little bit of Varric in, about Varric in, in this. Um, it, it focuses on a lot of different people. And that's why I describe it as busy, because there's so many characters, there's so many things going on, and yet it doesn't ruin it. It, it means things have to be done very quickly. Um, if we didn't have to have the crummy-ass clip show last week, we might have been able to introduce and talk about a lot of this stuff in a slower sort of manner. But all of this had to happen, da -da 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 and I just acted like uh, that guy from Newsies. I haven't seen that movie, but yeah, I know who I'm talking about. Um... Yeah, everything has to happen, everything happens just really quickly in this, but we get a lot of, uh, we get some resolutions to different things, or potential resolutions to different things. Um, so first of all, the vines, because of what Kuvira is doing to the spirit tree, the vines in the spirit realm in the spirit forest in Republic City are starting to act really weird. They're grabbing people, and yeah, it, it says something to do with that. That is less the focus, actually. Despite the fact that that was the clip that we were shown, that is less the focus. Oh, and by the way, Napoleon Dynamite is back. Uh, I guess he finally decided to join the Air Nation. I know he has a name, but he's Napoleon Dynamite. It's Napoleon Dynamite. What, what else am I going to say? Uh, <laughs> he's actually really funny, and so is the rest of the tour group who are there. Um, so anyway, while that's going on, Korra, it, a lot of people are dealing with the fact that they feel like no one cares about what they are trying to do. Uh, Korra feels like nobody cares about her anymore, like people have lost faith in her because she couldn't beat Kuvira and she's weaker than she was before. Um, Bolin, feels, Bolin feels really bad because Opal is still mad at him for what, for what he did. Uh, Asami is still mad at Varric for for uh, taking o for taking over her comp taking over her company or at least trying to to do that and uh, yeah also for blowing up the Southern Water Tribe Cultural Center uh, although Varric does have a point it is his own building so he can blow it up uh, let's see who else is angry at what oh I'm forgetting who there's there's one more person who's upset about something. Oh yeah, Opal's upset because she doesn't think people are paying attention to or caring about, you know, what she, about rescuing her family. Uh, actually, it's, and I guess that would be kind of reinforced by the fact that Korra is, you know, playing around with Naga and Opal is frickin' worried about her family there. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, ouch, bad timing. But anyway, so the vines start attacking people. Korra goes to alert the president to what's going on. The president is President Raiko, Tenzin, Prince Wu, and the Fire Lord are actually having a discussion about what to do about the Kuvira problem. I have no idea why the Water Tribe leaders are not there, but I guess they left. Um, it's been a couple of weeks, I think they said, so whatever. Anyway, Korra was not, despite being the Avatar, Korra was not invited. Um, it's clear that President, although I will say this about Wu, he did make the argument that she should be allowed to join. Um, yeah, he might be a ditz, but at least he's not a jerk. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, Raiko, and I'm guessing the Fire Lord too, seems to have lost faith in her. Tenzin, although Korra thinks he's lost faith in, in her, uh, is really just worried about her getting hurt. He says later, I'm worried if anything should happen to you. And that was a really sweet scene. They, they formed like a, there's a lot of feel scenes in here, like when 
uh, Mako and Bol Mako says, uh, you know, Cora, we do need, we want you here. Um, and Cora and Bolin and Mako all hug. You know, it's it's nice to see the fire ferrets kind of reunite and and hug each other to give each other support because of all that's happened with them and all that's you know gone on in the last few years and the mistakes they've made and whatnot. Um, it's nice to see that. It's also there's a lot of feels when. Uh, Korra talks to Tenzin and Tenzin said he's worried about her. They really formed a strong father-daughter bond and I really liked that. That was really nice. Uh, it was interesting hearing the president and the others discuss what they were going to do. Uh, the new Fire Lord, who, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't she the prosecutor at Yakom's trial? I don't know. Uh, the new Fire Lord is actually uh, somewhat isolationist. She doesn't want to get the Fire Nation involved in another useless war, which I can understand. Um, yeah, this has a lot of parallels with World War II. You know, there were different people who didn't want to get involved, other people who said we should just play defensive, you know, the uh, America First Society. And I guess you could say, in a sense, T Tenzin and the Fire Lord are sort of in that arena, while Ryko is more like FDR wanting to kind of get involved in Europe <laughs> or in the, uh, in the Earth Nation. Yes, whatever. But, uh, yeah, Raito's not willing to take them on alone, take Kuvira on alone, and he's only fortifying his defenses at the moment. So, we'll see what happens. I mean, if Kuvira can build a super weapon, what can, f what can really stop her, <laughs> so, besides the Avatar? Um, yeah, and actually, later on, Raiko gets Asami and Varric working on working together to, you know, counteract Kuvira's own technology, because Kuvira's, Kuvira's very much about tech, and about advancing and about progress. Um, and it's actually very interesting. It, <laughs> I, I wonder if this was intentional. I remember I made an Isengard joke before. This is a lot like Lord of the Rings with Kubira kind of being like Saruman and them harvesting the trees to make, you know, for technology and for the, the army and whatnot. And that's very, that's very much in the vein of, of Tolkien and the uh, harvesting of, uh, and the cutting down of the forest of Fangorn. So anyway, uh, the other big thing that happens in this in this episode is Korra goes to visit Zaheer. She's still dealing with her traumatic experience. She still can't quite get over her PTSD, and she can't even meditate and go into the spirit world. So she visits Zaheer. Um, nice beard, by the way. <laughs> and he agrees to help her. He actually doesn't double-cross her, which I was thinking would happen once they got into the spirit world, and then Korra would beat the crap out of him, and she'd learn that she doesn't have to fear him. But he says that she's actually been using her fear of him as a crutch. And, and this goes back to the theme that we've been saying about maybe Korra's nervous, Korra's still nervous, even when she says she's gotten past it, about being the Avatar, about risking her life, about about getting hurt herself and also hurting others uh, unintentionally. So Zaheer helps her meditate and actually tells her to play out what happened when he almost killed her um, and to actually see it go through. And she she says, um, no, he says, like, don't think about what might have been. Think about what, just let it play out. Think about what really happened. And, she's, and she says a really great line, I don't have any control. And maybe that's another thing that Korra's really afraid of. She's afraid of not having control here. She's afraid of not being able to be the best or be in, like, complete control and just kind of losing control of what's ever hap whatever's happening. And maybe that with Zaheer was the last, was kind of the last straw, the wake-up call where she was like, I lost control here, I couldn't quite do things, and now I'm nervous about getting back into the fray. I don't know, maybe... Maybe I'm reading too much into this. Maybe I'm not reading enough. I don't know. So, uh, anyway, actually what Zaheer tells us that's really interesting is that she has all the power in the world and that she is more powerful. And Rava tells her this, too, that she's more powerful than she thinks she is. Um, and at the end, she gets reconnected with Rava, and it's really great. <laughs> and she saves the people from the spirit area, and Volin goes off with Opal, and... Uh, Lynn to go save the rest of their family. I'm sure that will go well. It probably will, but wouldn't it be interesting if it didn't? Uh, so yeah, that was the episode. It was a great. It was a great episode. Uh, I really like. I really liked it. It was a big. Well, it's not too hard to be a step up from last week's episode. Um, but I'm really excited to see what Kuvira is going to do next and what is going to happen. So I can't wait for the clip and I can't wait for the episode. I'll see you next week.